Hey guys, brand new episode here of To The House Podcast. Well, we're back, we're back, we're back. After an exciting week of football, we're back here, guys. Hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving. It was fun. I know I had a lot of turkey to eat, well, mostly turkey and ham. I, if I'm at the point now, if I see a slice of ham, I would literally try to kill somebody. It is so, so, so hard. It's just, it's just really hard to <laughs> eat so much after eating three straight days in a row of just pure ham and meat and turkey. It was, uh, it's just too much. But to be fair. The food was delicious. I had a good time spending time with my family and friends. Well, but the more important part, guys, is we're back. And we're back to talk about football. And we had a good weekend. You know, obviously Thanksgiving weekend. We had three uh, Thanksgiving games. We'll talk about that, obviously. Well, we'll talk about really just one, in my opinion, that was more memorable. Obviously, the Detroit Lions lost to the Packers, which was quite surprising. Uh, and then we'll talk about the Cowboys and their emphatic statement victory over the lowly commanders. And, of course, the Seattle Seahawks losing, again, thrashed by the uh, San Francisco 49ers who came into Seattle and absolutely walloped them. Um, it was an overall good weekend. And, and, of course, college football had a fun weekend as well. It was rivalry weekend in college football. So many good rivalries. Obviously, Michigan versus Ohio State with the uh, Wolverines beating the Buckeyes. Once again, a third straight time, guys, that the Buckeyes have lost to the enemies from up north. The, it's absolutely shocking from, in my opinion, the Buckeyes, who can't seem to really beat Michigan right now. Michigan without Jim, without Jim Harbaugh. Who was suspended? That was his last game of his suspend of his suspension. It was kind of surprising, but to be fair, I have to. Yeah, I mean, the Wolverines came to play, and they played a good. They played a great game, um, great game plan from uh, from Harbo and his staff, and uh, yeah, the Wolverines got the win. And of course, the Iron Bowl was even exciting with Auburn versus Alabama in Jordan Hare Stadium. Auburn thought they were gonna get one of those uh uh one of those spoil their season spoiling victories that they do against Alabama and Jordan Hare. But it didn't matter. Jalen Monroe had a big time throw in the four, on that last conversion to score the touchdown and give the 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 tide the victory over Auburn once again. I believe now it's like the four in a row that Alabama has beaten Auburn um, quite fantastic um, that was an epic game and Alabama still got a chance to get to the uh, to the playoffs with a big uh, matchup versus Georgia coming up this weekend very excited to see that roll tide baby uh, and of course we had some other games as well I mean we had the uh, uh, obviously the Jets took on the Dolphins on Friday night, a Black Friday matchup, which ended up being a complete utter disaster, a nightmare for the Jets, who ended up losing, getting hammered by the Dolphins, and now are four and seven and look like the season's completely one hundred percent over. And you know, Tim Boyle's gonna start once again, and he clearly looked like a guy that <laughs> doesn't belong in an NFL uh, roster. And yet, he's the starting quarterback for the New York Jets. And just tells you how much of a mess the New York Jets are right now. And, of course, another big news. We got some big news. Well, guys, Carolina has officially fired Frank Wright as head coach of the team. Can we get a hell yeah? Yeah, it was a, a move that was desperately needed for the Panthers. Frank Reich, uh, it, what can we say about Frank Reich? He's been an absolute disaster 
in Carolina. And, he, and in my opinion, he hasn't really been a good coach. I mean, a lot of people are going to say, oh, maybe it was too harsh 11 weeks in and you're firing Frank Reich. You're, you're already seen enough. I have. I mean, you drafted the number one pick. You got the number one pick. You traded all that, all that assets to bring in a Bryce Young. Now, granted, people believe. Uh, say what do you want to say about Bryce Young. If he looks like a bust or he, he's not playing well, guys, let's be realistic here. I don't think any quarterback in the National Football League can succeed with that Carolina Panthers offensive line. It's it's like a shooting gallery. I, I think the only one that's just as bad as they are is probably the Commanders and the Giants and maybe the Patriots. But the Carolina Panthers are losing because they just don't have a good enough team. You know, Frank Reich didn't really build a good roster here, and David Te- and Tepper as well. Tepper has to be or has to be involved in this as well. I think he needs to be evaluated. He hasn't really done a good job with this football team. They have really built a very poor team for Bryce Young. Now, granted, C.J. Stroud has looked phenomenal. And there's nothing wrong about that. C.J. Stroud is a special player. We already knew that. But Houston had a better setup. They went out and spent a lot of money on building a team for C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud has great weapons on that team, by the way. I mean, Tank Dell is looking like a, a stud right now. They have Dalton Schultz, a very good, reliable tight end. You can ask Dak Prescott what he thinks about Dalton Schultz. He'll say nothing but great things about Dalton Schultz, and I am a Cowboys fan uh, for 30, almost 30 years now. And seeing how the Cowboys had always good luck with tight ends, I saw Dalton Schultz play with the Cowboys for a good four years, five years. He was pretty, pretty solid. And I thought it was a good pickup from the Houston Texans to get him. C.J. Stroud's got a great, great offense to work on. Their running game has really just been the issue for the Texans. If they can get some running game going on, C.J. Stroud would be absolutely flawless, and Houston would have a better record. Now, if you put in C.J. Stroud with Carolina, I guarantee you, he would not have the numbers that he's having right now in Houston. Houston built a good team. They spend the money on bringing in good players on this team. Bryce Bryce Young only has two reliable, solid options in the passing game. That's Chuba Hubbard and Adam Thielen. They don't have anything else, guys. They really don't have anything else. The, the, their other receivers are just dropping everything. And... What can we say about Miles Sanders? He might be one of the worst free agent signings in Carolina Panthers history. And they've had some bad ones. But this one's by far the worst free agent signing in franchise history for this Carolina Panthers team. This dude has done absolutely nothing for me. Chuba Hubbard has done more than Miles Sanders. Philly obviously fleeced him. They let go they let Miles Sanders they let Miles Sanders go. And they got DeAndre Swift. This is why Harry Roseman is one of the best GMs in football. And the Panthers are 1-10. in 10. Those decisions was what kills them. Frank Reich was never a good choice for the Carolina Panthers. He wants a C.J. Stroud. He doesn't want a Bryce Young. Bryce Young is a guy that works better when he has a running game. And he has some decent receivers to throw the football to. At Alabama, he had Mechie. He had Jam- he had Jameson Williams. He had weapons. He had a decent running game. He had uh, Jamar. Uh, he had Gibbs. He had, he had Jamar. He had uh, Jamar. Uh, he had Gibbs. He had he had a good offensive line. He had Nick Saban. He had a a solid offense. I'm sorry, Bryce Young had. A decent amount of weapons. Bryce Young can play. The problem is Carolina is just absolutely terrible. They're not a good franchise right now. And we have to be realistic here. And if you're not realistic about it, then blow everything up. 
and start all over again. Trade. See, if you're you're not happy about Bryce Young, I guarantee you Bryce Young goes to any other team in the National Football League. He'll be so much better than when he is in Carolina. There's a reason why Carolina went with six or seven different quarterbacks since Cam Newton. They they destroyed Cam Newton. Cam got injuries. Burned him to the ground. They let him go. They went out and get Sam Darnold, by the way, guys. Sam Darnold, who didn't really work out that well in Carolina. He had to run for his life. He had They were lucky he had legs. He had to run for his life. He got slaughtered. Teddy Bridgewater. Not a great quarterback, but he's not a horrible one. Then they tried Baker Mayfield. Granted, Baker's all right, but Baker's doing solid things in Tampa. I mean, granted, the offensive line for Tampa is not as great as they once was. But he had weapons, and he's doing pretty well. Tampa's in the hunt for that division, even though that division's fucking garbage. But I guarantee you, you put Bryce Young in Seattle, Arizona, maybe, or to be realistic, you put him in Indianapolis, that guy would thrive. Carolina's a dump. It's a dump. Put Bryce Young in a better scenario, Bryce Young would deliver. Carolina is just an absolute disaster. It was a bad fit for Bryce. It was a bad fit for Carolina. They didn't really want him. They wanted C.J. Stroud. Well, sorry. Frank Wright wanted C.J. Stroud. They wanted Bryce Young. But guess what? When you have a coach that didn't want the quarterback, and he ends up getting the quarterback he didn't want, it's never a good thing. Bryce Young was is, was in a lose lose situation, and he's probably going to be until they find a coach that can finally build an offense around Bryce Young. Until that happens, it's no other choice. Bryce Young's going to continue struggling, and they're going to have they're going to keep losing. And the worst part is the Carolina Panthers are not getting rewarded for their losing. They traded away their assets to Chicago to get the number one pick of the draft last year so they got the quarterback but they can't build around it they can't go get a marvin harrison jr they can't go if they're not happy with bryce young they can't go get a caleb williams they're done they're done they traded their assets they traded everything they traded their marbles for bryce young and it's starting to look like an absolute stupid decision seeing how cj Stroud continues to ball out seeing how the bears have possibly will have two top three picks in the draft next year with this loaded draft with offense, Carolina is only just going to shoot themselves in the foot even more. So they're going to have to go with some veteran guys, build that offensive line, start making some moves. Carolina is going to have to really promote themselves better as an organization. They're just an absolute mess. And I don't know what else can they do, but they are bad. And they are going to be bad for years to come. I feel for Bryce Young because I love Bryce Young. I think he's a great kid. I think he's a great kid. I think he's a good NFL quarterback. I honestly believe he can be a good NFL quarterback. What I saw at Alabama, he showed that he has a clutch gene. He can be a leader. He has a nice arm. Yes, he's a little bit undersized, but who gives a shit? Kyler Murray's undersized. Drew Brees was undersized. Size doesn't really matter in the National Football League. I think that's just mildly overrated. If you got it, you got it. Bryce Young has it, but they just haven't really built a good team around him. And you have to be, and it's 100% truthful. You can't go in there and tell me that Carolina has done a tremendous job building a, a potent offense with Bryce Young. Absolutely not. Not even close. It's been far from being potent. This is an absolute, utter disaster. I don't know what else to say, but Carolina, 
It's going to be years for them to get any sort of relevancy. I feel for them. I feel for Bryce Young. I think this is going to be a long couple of years for him. I feel for it. I hope everything gets better for him, though. I really do. Because he's a good kid. And I think, honestly, I honestly believe he can be a very good NFL quarterback. I believe it. Let's talk about the first Thanksgiving, the only Thanksgiving matchup I think was worth talking about because I think there was a lot of topics here. Was the Washington Commanders taking on the Dallas Cowboys in Arlington, Texas. Uh, It started out very slow. The Cowboys were starting out very slow. I mean, they had that nice first drive, and they scored, and the Commanders came right back. and, And then after that, the Cowboys just went ballistic, especially in the second half. They just went absolutely ballistic and absolutely hammered the Washington Commanders. And I, a few takeaways I got from this is that the Dallas Cowboys are playing out of their effing minds right now, guys. The Cowboys right now, the way they're playing right now, they're the best team in football. They're the best, most complete team in football. Defensively, they're tremendous. They take, they turn the ball over. They take the ball away from you. Deron Bland's got five, five guys, five pick sixes this season. 11 games, by the way, guys. That's outrageous. That's an NFL record. Win 11 games. He can honestly do two more. Three more, maybe, this year. It's truly remarkable what Deron Bland is doing. He should be in the defensive player of the year conversation. I honestly think they should. I think if anybody who could do five straight, five, sorry, five pick sixes in a season, that puts you in the conversation. You know how hard it is to get an interception in the National Football League, especially now, and then run into the end zone, and you're doing that five times in 11 games? That's truly incredible, guys. You, I hope you guys know that, how incredible that is. And one of the things that blew me away was how great Dak Prescott's playing. You know me, I have been critical of Dak Prescott for a the last couple of years, I thought and, and during the contract year, he deserved his money. I thought he showed that he was brilliant. He showed that he was elite. And then he kind of like started slipping off a lot. He started throwing interceptions and he wasn't particularly playing as well, especially in the big games. He wasn't playing that well. It started like that during the beginning of the season where I was like, I'm not liking Dak Prescott right now. I'm not liking how the way he's playing. He's turning the ball over, guys. He's turning the ball over. He's turning the ball over. No, guys. Dak Prescott's balling right now. It's safe to say he should be in the conversation for MVP. His numbers are just outrageous. Yes, his defense gets most of the gets most of the, the shine because they're so damn good but Dak Prescott's playing better than anybody in the National Football League right now everybody's saying Jalen Hurts Jalen Hurts Jalen Hurts or Patrick Mahomes Patrick Mahomes definitely always deserves to be in the conversation because the Chiefs are nothing without him and I think the only reason why they even have a winning record is because of him but Dak Prescott has had a better season than Jalen Hurts go look at the numbers the only reason why Jalen Hurts is even in the conversation is because they're 10 1. And to be fair, the Eagles are extremely lucky to be 10 1. We'll talk about them in a little bit. The Cowboys had this great defense, but they're not running the ball effectively that well. Now they kind of are. But the only reason why they're even in games right now is because of Dak Prescott. And I have to admit it, Dak Prescott is playing some of the best football of his career. And now I'm starting to feel a little more confident with the Dallas Cowboys possibly making a run in the playoffs. If he continues to play like this and play this balance offense that they're playing, and guys, they're only two games behind the Eagles for first place in that number one seed. Detroit's got to play tougher games. Right? Detroit's got to play tougher games. The Cowboys are 8-3. and three. 
it's interesting. Things get very interesting here in the NFC. Right? I think that's the best way to describe it. The 49ers are going to be in the hunt, but the 49ers have to play the Eagles this coming week. Not sure if they can pull out a win in Philadelphia. I think it's close. I think Vegas has uh, Niners as favorites, but I I'm not entirely sure. The Eagles somehow find a way to win games when they are playing like absolute doo-doo. They still win games. I mean, the Eagles just have talent at this point, and their talent is winning their games. And a little bit of the referee decision, but hey, that's another day. Top for another day. But, guys, it's safe to say that this team right now, man, they are, this Dallas Cowboys team is playing better than anybody in the National Football League right now, guys. It's, it's, it's true, and if you guys want to say that there aren't, I get it, because you could be a little skeptic about about this team and how they've yet to be in an NFC championship game since 1995. And hey, I get it. That's fine. You can keep saying that. But this Cowboys team is playing better than anybody right now. And I put my bottom dollar right now. The, the, the Dallas Cowboys play against anybody right now, and they'll give them a game. They're going to have a big test coming up in the next couple of weeks. You know, Seattle is coming up on Thursday. That is a game that you can't sleep on. The Seattle Seahawks, yeah, they haven't been playing good football lately, but they're still a dangerous team. They have a great defense. They have an offense that if they can get a firing all cylinders, they're tough to beat. And then after that, you play the Eagles again in Dallas. You lost in Philadelphia in a game that you really should have won. That's already in the back of their mind. We got to beat Philadelphia this time. Because if Philly loses against San Francisco, that game against Dallas and Arlington is going to be a bloodbath. I can't wait for that. But if the Eagles win, then it's just one of those games. Neither one can win. But the Cowboys have a tough schedule coming up. It's going to get tough. Seattle. They host Seattle. They host Philly. Then they got to go to Buffalo. That's uh, At Buffalo is tough. And then they got to go host the Miami Dolphins. If I'm not mistaken. That's a tough series as well. I'm curious to see what the Cowboys will do. There's a tough schedule that remains. But they finish, they, they finish the season with easy games. So we'll see how that goes. But this is do or die for the Cowboys. And right now they're playing better than anybody in the National Football League. So if they have confidence now. But they have to keep it going if they want to be doing anything this season. I'm curious to see what they do. Now for the, for the away team, the Commanders. Season's over for them. They're 4-8. They had two very ugly losses. They got they got smoked by the Giants. But she's telling you something there. That's a problem there. And then they just got absolutely dismantled by the Cowboys. And the commander schedule is not going to get any easier. It's not going to get any easier. Already they finished with the Eagles. They finished with the Giants. They got one more with Dallas. I don't like their chances there. Although they do pretty well at home. And it's going to be cold. So anything can happen in, in, in Landover. But they still got to play some teams, man. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. I, I'm not sure what the Commanders can do at this point. But it's not looking good for the Commanders. They still got to play the Chiefs, I believe, as well. It's ugly. It's ugly. They need to rebuild. They need to build something with Sam Howell. I think Sam Howell is a, de is a good NFL quarterback. He shows moments where he's brilliant. He's the NFL pass top passer right now in the league. That's saying something with a dude that literally is the most sacked quarterback in the National Football League. It's truly incredible. He's still pro he's producing. His receivers are, are decent. Their offensive line is terrible, and they need to work on it. 
and need to build some sort of running game. And their defense still needs help. I still, to this day, don't understand why they traded Sweat and in Chase Young. I still don't understand that. Like They thought they were going to win without him. Really? You guys were in good shape when you had him. Now you stink. And I wonder why. Because you're trading pieces. They have to rebuild. You have to rebuild and you need to stick with it. You got to be like the Giants and stick with the rebuild. And do it. And do it right. So, the Commanders have a lot of work to do. That's for sure. Uh, first Sunday game, I want to talk about the Steelers at Bengals. Steelers 16, Bengals 10. Uh, guys, holy shit, guess what? The bank, the uh, Steelers actually won the game. And guess what? Their offense had over 400 yards of offense. Wow. In the first game, without Matt Canada as offensive coordinator, things are starting to look different now for the Steelers offensively. Yes, they've scored 16 points. Granted, they're playing against one of the toughest defenses in the National Football League in Cincinnati. But the Steelers moved the ball effectively. They ran the ball better. The offense looked structural. They're 7 of 4. The Browns are going to start going down because the Browns lost their quarterback. You know, not having Deshaun Watson there really hurts their chances. Their defense is as good as anybody, but the Steelers, they're a playoff team right now, guys. And I think they will be. They, they, they're, they are a potent offense. You know, they are a potent offense. And um, we'll see how that goes. I, I, I really, truly believe that the Steelers have looked so much better. And Pickens, Pickett and Pickens, that's a nice little duo now. These guys like to play in the big games, the big moments, the games where they need to win. These guys play hard. And I truly believe that these guys can be something special. You know, everybody wants to shit on Kenny Pickett, and I get it. He's an awkward quarterback. You know, he's short. He's got small hands. He's wearing the two. He's got the two gloves. Hey, man, Kenny Pickett's doing the job for for the Steelers for Mike Tomlin. He's doing it. It's working. So why fuck it up? Why why blow it up? They're seven and four guys. They're they're not bad. They're seven to four for a reason. I don't care what anybody tells me. They're seven to four. They're a good football team. They deserve to be in the playoffs. Everybody else has been shit. So why can't the Steelers continue to be here? They should stay. I like it. I like it a lot. And for the Bengals, I feel for them. They started Jake Browning in this game. Joe Burrow is obviously done for the year. He just had surgery today on his wrist. So he's going through the recovery phase now. I feel for them, man. I feel for them because this was a season where they were supposed to be. They were supposed to be legit. They were supposed to be a Super Bowl contender. The season's over for them, and I, I hate. I hate it. I hate that it's over for them, but the season's over. It's a wasted year for them, I feel, for them. But, guys... It's okay. Just rebuild. Just get Joe more protection. And I tell you what, they'll be back. And they'll be a contender for the AFC. That is for sure. That is for sure. Now, let's talk about this game. I, I was really excited about this game. Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Houston Texans. Jax, Jaguars won 24-21. to this was a very exciting game. I can't wait for more of this matchup between these two up exciting franchises. The Houston Texans are a fun team to watch. D'Amico Ryans has done an absolutely incredible job with this Houston Texans team. He's just as good as anybody in the National Football League. Uh, he's built a good defense. The offense, you know, you got C.J. Stroud, you got all these weapons, and the Jacksonville Jaguars are 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 eight and four. 
they're legit. They're legit. They're legit. Uh, I honestly really like the Jaguars this season. I really think Trevor Lawrence is playing better than anybody in the National Football League. He's starting to get hot. And uh, I like where Jacksonville's heading. Doug Peterson's just a tremendous coach. And it's showing, man. The tech, the Jaguars are just so exciting. Um, and, of course, what can we talk about the Houston Texans? They have C.J. Stroud, who's running away with, with Offensive Rookie of the Year. And, in my opinion, he's my vote for, for the NFL MVP right now. I don't. I. I think anybody. If anybody deserves to win the MVP, it's him. He changed the franchise. He changed the franchise. This Houston Texans team was going to win three, four games at best. He's. They're six and five, and in a playoff spot. And they went neck to neck with one of the best teams in the in the in the league. And then they beat the Bengals, the red hot Bengals at that time with Joe Burrow, guys. Not Jake Browning, Joe Burrow in Cincinnati and beat him. CJ Stroud is him. He's my MVP. I, I, I'm astonished that Jalen Hurts is even in even the conversation. We'll talk about him in a little bit. But in my opinion, these are two franchises that are going the right way. You got the Colts are in the hunt. Once they get Anthony Richardson back, It'll be exciting. That division is going to be exciting. Will Levis has shown some moments of brilliance. There's some good young quarterbacks in that division. That division is going to be exciting next year. If they build, each each one of them build the uh, team correctly. That's a fun franchise to watch. That's a fun division to watch. I'm sorry. It's a fun division. I like that division. And But, you know, two things I've got to talk about as well. Trevor Lawrence is starting to enter elite quarterback status. I'm starting to believe that Trevor Lawrence is amongst the top 10 quarterbacks in the National Football League now. I think you have to. He's playing better. Than, he's playing really good football. He's got a good offense now. Uh, yes, he hasn't thrown that many touchdowns this season, but uh, last week against a good team, he, he, he started playing really good football. And he runs really well. I mean, he's he's a good quarterback, guys. I mean, what else is there to say about him? He's a good quarterback. He he needs to be in the amongst the elite. I think there's he's better than 15, 20 quarterbacks in the National Football League. He's top ten in my opinion. He's entered the top ten sphere. He's getting close to top five. He's not there yet, but he's getting there. He's getting there, and he will be very soon. And this Jaguars team is the top five team in football right now. I don't want to play them. I would not want to play the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. They are getting hot, guys. They are getting hot, and they're not afraid of playing anybody. They played against a hot football team, and they beat them. In their backyard, by the way. This team is special. There's something about this team, man. Uh, they are special. They are a very special bunch. I, I, I like this Jacksonville Jaguars team. I think they got something special going on. Next game, guys, is the uh, is the Gobble Ghoul game, I call it. The New England Patriots taking on the New York Giants in MetLife Stadium. Giants won 10 to 7 and ugly. Ugly. Ugly game. This was a horrible game to watch but the Giants have a new face of their fledgling season and it's Tommy DeVito the gabagool himself Tony Soprano himself at quarterback hey how you doing hey, hey, hey I'm walking here hey get over here where the gabagool ma 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 I want, you got some spaghetti what about some gabagool? Give me, give me some cold cuts. Hey, I'm walking here, motherfucker. Uh, hey, that's their quarterback, and it's working. Tommy DeVito's played. He's not playing great, but he's not screwing up. Granted, they played some pretty bad teams to win. He absolutely got demolished against the Cowboys, but again, 
who hasn't been demolished by the Cowboys lately this season? Lately, I would say. And he scored 17 points on them, by the way, too. So it's not like he's a slouch either, man. He's a good, he's a good, he's a decent quarterback, but it's good for Giants fans to feel some sort of hope. Well, not hope, a little happiness from their team now. They suck. There's no question about it. But Tommy DeVito's a nice story. It's a nice story, and the Giants should be happy about having a quarterback like that instead of Daniel Jones just running and screwing around and throwing for under 175 yards and looking like an absolute fool and then injuring his neck and then you know injuring himself and nearly looking like he's being decapitated by defenders and and at least Tommy DeVito's doing the little hand gestures. I mean, he's starting to look like a real NFL quarterback. He had a decent game. He outplayed Mac Jones. He outplayed Mac Jones. Mac Jones two years ago, or two, three years ago, was a pro bowler. That just shows you how bad he's fallen. But Tommy DeVito, the gabagool himself, the Italian stallion, the best thing to come out of it, kind of jersey since Tony Soprano and Bruce Springsteen. Hey, how you doing? Give me the gabagool. Hey, I'm walking here. Giants win. 10-7. to 7. Hey, Belichick, get the fuck out of here, you motherfucker. That's badass. I'll give it to the Giants in this one. I had to applaud the Giants on that one. That was fun to watch. Them winning 10-7 to 7 in an ugly fashion. And, and they get to host the Packers next week, guys. So they could win three in a row. Crazy. But uh, for the Giants... Them winning today, that game, screwed everything up on their draft positioning. Because if they've lost to the Patriots, the Patriots would have had three wins. The Giants would have been three and eight or three and nine. It would have helped their draft chance, their their stock by getting a quarterback. Because obviously, let's be fair, guys. We love Tommy DeVito, and I love to listen to... The Italians going crazy about Tommy DeVito as their quarterback. The Gabagool, you know, Capigola, how you doing? Hey, you, you fucking, you fucking Fanook. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm watching too much Sopranos, guys. Sorry about that. Yo, you fucking, you Gabi Dutz. <laughs> guys, for be real. Tommy DeVito is not a long-term answer for the New York Giants. And if Giants fans believe that, then they're out of their fucking minds. Be realistic. You need a quarterback. You need a long-term franchise quarterback. Tommy DeVito is not your long-term quarterback. He's a nice backup. He's a fun story. You'll make a movie out of this. You could make, probably make a comedy out of this, honestly, because it's so fucking funny. This is like the most New York, New Jersey thing you could ever do to the New York, New Jersey football team. It's actually a cool story. But let's be realistic, guys. That's how far as it goes. It can't go anymore. Tommy DeVito is, is not your franchise quarterback. So you got to really start thinking about these games. You're going four and eight. You beat the Packers. You're five and eight. And you're in the middle. You're not even in the conversation for the number one pick anymore. Because if you think about it, you got you got Arizona losing. Carolina is losing. Chicago is going to be losing. I'm not sure how much longer, but the Chicago might fuck it up and win another game. But hey, they got Carolina's pick, so why the fuck they care? It's working for them. It's an issue for the Giants. They need to keep losing. Guys, stay on course. This is a fun little day where you got to go, hey, how you doing? We won a game today. Hey, how you doing, you fucking motherfucker? No. 
Now you got to understand now that the Giants need to start tanking again. Tank, tank. If they beat the Packers next week, they're 5 and 8. You lose the positioning. Think, Giants, think. This is the perfect opportunity for them to move on from Daniel Jones and get a good franchise quarterback. There's plenty this season. They can't really fuck it up like they did with Dan- getting Daniel Jones. You can't fuck it up even more, guys. Giants need to stay focused on tanking. But it's only fun. It is fun to see them celebrating Gabagool, throwing the Italian flags, wearing the hair gels, putting in the chaps the chapsticks on their lips, cooking Italian sausage in the grill, saying, Hey, how you doing? You what the fuck are you doing here? You know, uh, hey Ma, get the meatloaf, get the sauce. I'm sorry, the gravy. Bring in the gravy, Ma. Come on, Ma. What the hell are you doing? I love you, Ma. God bless. We're going to Club Karma after this. We're going down to Jersey Shore and we're going to fist bump our fucking arms off. But that's it. Don't win more football games, Giants. You don't want to fuck this up. If they fuck it up, then we got nothing else to blame. But hey, we got Tommy DeVito. So cool. Cool story. The other side, the New England Patriots. Uh, well, it's simple, right? Bill Belichick has to go. Bill Belichick is clearly aged in this new NFL. He's clearly looked old in this team. This team looks like an old school football team that is just years off, years behind everybody. That's not like what it used to be where they used to be years ahead. Now there's years behind. They're not a good football team, guys. It's like, be realistic, guys. Like, they're a bad team. They have a good defense, but their offense is absolutely terrible. I think my high school football team could beat this Patriots team offensively. Um, Belichick will have to has to go, but I don't think it will be that easy, guys. Because knowing Belichick, the only way you lose Belichick or Belichick leaves is if he retires, and I highly doubt he wants to retire. I truly believe he'll go anywhere else. He'll go somewhere else and be a coach. If he leaves, the Chargers are going to be after him, or any team should be after Belichick, as they should. He's one of the greatest coaches ever. It's hard when you move on from arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the sport to Mac Jones. It stinks when it happens. And there's nothing you can do about it. What what can you do? You can't do anything about it. The only way I think that would be Belichick's leaving because Robert Kraft's not going to fire Bill Belichick. No. He loves Bill. He has so much respect for Bill. He's not going to do it. Mr. Kraft won't do it. I know it for a fact. He doesn't have the heart to do it. He has so much respect for him. It just won't happen. It just won't happen. I think it would only be if he retires. And I hope it would be like that because I honestly believe that he um, that he you know gets it. And, and uh, gets the retirement. It's not the way that he would want to leave, but he's got 300 wins, guys. And guess what? He's already gotten a few things. You know, he's his his legacy in Canton is is finished. He's a Hall of Famer, no question about it. But yeah, the Patriots need to rebuild with new coach, new system, new everything. It's going to be a lot of work, but we'll see how that goes. Browns taking on the Denver Broncos. Broncos win 29-12. to The Browns, how are they going to fix their season? Well, they need to get a veteran quarterback. They went out and signed Joe Flacco. Uh, why not start him next week? You need to. Uh, DTR is clearly has an head injury. He's not the guy. <laughs> Like, let's be realistic. He's not a good quarterback. Um, 
PJ Walker is a is a nice little backup quarterback, but that's it. They need a veteran quarterback. Joe Flacco's done it. He's played in the playoffs. Put him in that roster. In my opinion, he can w- make them win games where they could have won. Well, guys, we need to. This is one thing that we need to say here: the Denver Broncos are for real. <laughs> They are back. The Denver Broncos are here, guys. They have finally arrived. Two years too late, but they've arrived. Their defense is playing better than anybody right now. Their offense is starting to get it going. They have a nice running game. Russell Wilson's playing really good football, guys. We need to apologize to him. We need to apologize. I need to apologize to Russell Wilson. I'm sorry, Russ. We should have known you could still have the skills to cook. He's far from being done, guys. He is back. He's starting to get this offense. The Broncos are getting hell are are not hell getting healthy because they still have offensive line issues. But they are playing as good as anybody right now in the National Football League, guys. And it's safe to say. That this Denver Broncos team is a playoff team. We need to apologize to Russell Wilson. We need to apologize to Sean Payton. I have to apologize to both of them. I'm so sorry because I said you need to move on from Russell Wilson. Sean Payton, you made a big mistake coming to Denver. No, no, no. He basically put a 12-inch dick and put it right and shove it into my mouth and say, how do you like that taste? How does that taste, motherfucker? what he just did he shoved a big old dick in my mouth it's it's truly an incredible job what both these guys have been doing they have been silent they've been saying guys we're keeping the receipts at one and five by the way guys they were one and five they had no business doing this and they did it, brother. They did it. God bless. God bless them, man. They are playing good, better than anybody in the National Football League right now. And you have to give a lot of uh, respect to this fran- to this coaching job. Sean Payne deserves a lot of respect. And guys, bravo. Bravo to the, to the Denver Broncos. And bravo to Russell Wilson. I shoved that thing right out of my mouth. Crazy, 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 crazy. Good shit from the Broncos. Buffalo Bills against the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles won 37-34. This was the game I wanted to talk about. This is a game that really agitated me. It kind of triggered me. The Eagles are 10-1, guys. And everybody's ready kissing on their feet. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. No, they are not. People, please, please stop the narrative because they're 10 and 1. They're the best team in football. No, they are not. If you see their games and study the tape, this Philadelphia Eagles team is one of the luckiest teams in the National Football League. You remember the Vikings two years ago when they were 10 and 1? Yeah, you remember that? When they went on this amazing run and won all these late games in late minutes? <clears throat> this is very similar to that team, except better than that Vikings team. This Eagles team has. Big holes in the secondary. Big. We're talking big holes. Their linebackers are average at best. They have an amazing front seven. They have a very good front seven. That's why they're even in games. And they have this, and they have arguably one of the best receiving duos in the National Football League. I mean, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith are, are 
they are the best. They are, in my opinion, they are in the conversation to be one of the best, if not the best. Those two are playing good football. But let's pump the brakes on the Eagles. They're 10 and 1 because of sheer luck. They should have lost this game to the Bills. The Bills blew it on that overtime drive where they could have wrapped it up if Gabe Davis actually turned around and looked at the football. He looked the other way. Miscommunication between him and Josh Allen seems to be a common occurrence with the Bills this season. But if they actually made that play, the game was over and the Eagles would have lost and we'd be talking a different story. That has been the Eagles season. The week before against the Chiefs. Chiefs The Chiefs had two drops. Kelsey fumbled. Eagles took advantage and they scored and they won. A game they, they should have lost. Against the Cowboys, by the way, guys. Horrible refereeing decisions going against the Cowboys. And then they shot themselves in the foot with the penalties. And then the Cowboys shot themselves in the foot. And that was what made the difference by inches. The Cowboys should have been the Eagles. That's three games already. The Dolphins. If it wasn't for a horrible refereeing decision, it would have been a much closer game. And don't forget, this team lost to the New York Jets. The New York Jets. And who was quarterback of the Jets? Mr. Zach Wilson. And guess what? They came back and beat them in that game. The Eagles were leading. The Eagles are far from being the best team in football. Don't be fooled. This team plays than anybody red hot in the playoffs, they would lose. This team has first round exit all over it. I don't care if Philly don't want me. I don't give a shit if Eagles fans Start cursing me out, which they already have already. I wonder why, because their city's a fucking dump, and their f- team, their fans are a bunch of fucking trolls. A bunch of morons, low IQ'd morons. For them, the Eagles are the best team in football. No. No, 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 no. You should have lost to the Cowboys. You should have lost to the Chiefs, and you should have lost this one. You've been lucky. Be they should be happy. They're ten and one. They can talk. But guys, the luck will run out. Happen to the Vikings. It will happen to this Eagles team. I just don't see this team getting to a Super Bowl. And if they do, I just don't see them winning it. They make too many mistakes. If you saw that tape. Jason Kelsey made two horrible brain scratch, head scratching mistakes. Jason Kelsey, one of the best centers ever, making that mistakes. That is all concern if Jason Kelsey's doing that. And he's been doing that a few times this season. Not to discredit Jason Kelsey as a football player, he's in my opinion, the best center in football. But I'm telling you right now, if he's making mistakes, it's showing that the Eagles are flawed. They're vulnerable. The Jets beat them, guys. The Jets beat them. They play the Cowboys again, and they play them in two weeks. I guarantee you the Cowboys are going to remember that game in Philly and how they should have won. The Chiefs are going to remember that loss. And how Nick Sirianni, who I love, by the way. I love Nick Sirianni. A lot of people hate him. I think he's a good dude. He's passionate. He loves his team. And he's a good fucking football coach. No disrespect to Nick Sirianni. Got a lot of love and respect for Nick Sirianni. But he was huffing and puffing. Chiefs fans, you talking all that shit. That shit going to bite you in the ass, bro. That shit going to bite you in the ass. This Eagles team is not going far. Remember me when I say this. 
the Eagles won't be in the Super Bowl, guys. I just don't see it. And then another thing that makes me laugh, that Jalen Hurts is the front runner for MVP now. What the actual fuck? Last season, he deserved it. No questions about it. He was one of the best players in football. He had His numbers were unbelievable. Threw, I think he threw for over 38 touchdowns. Truly incredible. This season, he's got 18 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. And he's under 3,000 passing yards. What? Since when did that say MVP to me? That tells me he's underperforming. Last season, he should have won MVP. The only reason why he didn't win MVP is because he got hurt. He got hurt. And Garner Minshew had two nice games. Sure that their offense was just that good. They were just too dominant. I'm sorry, guys. How on earth is Jalen Hurts the best player in football? How is he MVP? He's not even the best player on his team. Jalen Hurts was a bum before A.J. Brown got to that team. If anybody deserves MVP, is A.J. Brown. He changed the franchise. He changed Jalen Hurts' career. They were thinking about getting rid of him in his first season as a starter. He showed some nice games, but he was not that great. They squeezed in the playoffs. Once they got A.J. Brown is when things changed. Devontae Smith got better. A.J. Brown is there. And they had a nice offensive line. Jalen Hurts is not my MVP. And if he wins MVP... It would be the biggest robbery in NFL history. He don't deserve it. Anybody who's got 18 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, you don't deserve MVP. I'm sorry. Mahomes has got better numbers than him. Even Dak Prescott has better numbers than Jalen Hurts. Dak Prescott's got 23 touchdowns and 6 interceptions. 6. This guy was the interception leader last year. Right? Right? This was Dak was pick. Dak will Dak turnovers. Dak this. Dak that. Dak's only thrown six interceptions this season. He's got 23 touchdowns. He's got over 3,000 yards. That is MVP numbers. Those are MVP numbers. Not 18 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Guys, be realistic. He had one nice drive at OT to help them win that game. To help them win that game. So now you think that's MVP? No, nah, guys. Be realistic. Lamar Jackson had better numbers than Jalen Hurts. Fuck. Look at Sam Howell's numbers compared to Jalen Hurts. They're better than his. Sam Howell only has a little more interceptions than him. Guys, what are we doing here? Just because they have the best record in football? You got to give him the MVP? It's he don't deserve that. He deserved it last year, one hundred percent. Not this year. This year you got to give it to AJ Brown if you're gonna give it to an Eagles player. Not Jalen Hurts, guys. Come on, be realistic. And if you do that, then uh, fuck NFL reporters. They are just stupid. They are just stupid. They don't know football. Jalen Hurts is not playing good football. He's playing solid football. But you're telling me he's, uh, oh my God, elite. He's the best quarterback in football. No, 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 no. Pump the brakes. Patrick Mahomes is still the best quarterback in football. Let's pump the brakes. If you put Patrick Mahomes with that Eagles offense, Pat Mahomes could have th- thrown 60 touchdowns. Relax now, boys. He's got a team that he literally just has to throw the football to, to, to Mr. Taylor Swift, and that's it. And they looked pretty damn good last week, by the way. Isaiah Pacheco is a nice little weapon they got there. He's he's, he's like the secret weapon they, they needed. 
dies. Pump the brakes on Jalen Hurts as MVP. If you guys think he is, then you guys are fucking morons. I don't care. I'll tell you in your face. He's not your MVP. I'm sorry. Jalen Hurts is not MVP. If you think that way, you must be an Eagles fan or you just have no idea how to properly watch football. I'm sorry. CJ Stroud deserves the MVP. He's my MVP. He's taking a rookie is taking a team that was supposed to win maximum five games, four games at best, into a playoff spot, unlikely playoff spot. Guys, what are we doing here? We need to really evaluate proper techniques for football. It's this is this is unbelievable. But enough of the Eagles because they make me sick. I hate that franchise. I hate the Eagles. I hate Philadelphia. It's a dump. It's garbage. I hope it one day gets blown up. I would laugh. Because that city is just awful. Nothing great happens in Philadelphia. Cheesesteaks are overrated. The only, good, the only great thing that happened in Philadelphia was Rocky. I don't even want to fucking hear it. I love Meek Mill. But if I hear Dreams and, uh, Dreams and Nightmares again, I'm going to fucking kill myself. I'm done with that song. Fuck it. Fuck Philadelphia. I hate Philly. I hate it. But anyway, back to talking about this game. The Bills. I mean, what else can the Bills do? This was another heartbreaking loss. Overtime, by the way. Josh Allen's 0-6 in overtime games. Can we... I mean, I love Josh Allen. I think he's a great quarterback. He clearly is amongst the elite. But we need to stop comparing him to Patrick Mahomes or even Joe Burrow at this point. Because Josh Allen has only taken this team to an AFC Championship game once and they got blown out by the Chiefs. Since then, they have not been close. They have not been close. And this season is a perfect example of what is going on. Their offense is too anemic. I think Joe Brady is a great offensive coordinator and they need to continue with him because it clearly shows that their offense can work with him. They looked a lot better tonight, this game. They run the ball effectively. Josh Allen is starting to get a little more comfortable with this offense. But guys, uh, let's be realistic here and let's slow down and pump the brakes, guys, because I'm telling you right now, there's some issues going on with this team. Offensively, they're struck, they 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 look better. Defensively, they they're in shambles. They don't really rush the quarterback. Uh, I honestly thought they had a perfect game plan for this game until the Eagles came back. But even then, like Allen had that nice little mm-hmm. run, and then when I thought they scored that touchdown at the end. Still part of me believed that the Eagles were going to come back and tie this game. Because it happens to the Bills too too many times. And then the overtime, when he missed that throw to Gabe Davis, if which Gabe Davis just needs to turn the other way, and he could just put his arms out, and he would have caught the ball. It was a perfect throw by Josh Allen. Even then, when I saw that, that they were going to kick the field, I said, this game's over. The Eagles are going to win this game. And guess what? It did. It happened. It happened. They need to rebuild. I mean, the 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 Bills need to rebuild. They need to really. They need to do something about Stefan Diggs, because I think Stefan Diggs is done. I think he doesn't want to be there that much anymore. I thinking his head is frustrating because, in my opinion, he is a guy that needs to. playing somewhere else. I would love to see him in Dallas play with his brother Trayvon. Um, But I think another thing that needs to happen is that they need to move on from him and they need to revamp this offense and do something. And they, I think they really need to evaluate Josh Allen's production right now. 
I mean, he's not having the best season. He's turning the ball over a little bit too much. And to be fair, this is maybe this it's maybe time. I think the Josh Allen era is coming towards the end and their Super Bowl window is getting cl- closer and closer to shutting. I think this is the closest ever for it to being shut down. And they need to really work on that defense. They need to rush. They need to get a guy to rush the quarterback. You depend too much on Von Miller, who's getting older in age, who's clearly lost a step. And I think the Bills just need to really completely rebuild. It's as simple as that. They need to rebuild, and they need to really be serious about their offense. So we'll see how it goes from there. Next and final game, we talk about Sunday Night Football. The Baltimore Ravens taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. Ravens winning 20-10. to 10. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best team in football. The Baltimore Ravens are the best team in football. No questions asked. Their defense is elite. Their defense is one of the best in football. Uh, their offense is playing better than anybody right now. I mean, Lamar Jackson's having fun. They have Zay Flowers. They have Odell Beckham Jr., the only problem they have is they don't have that security blanket at tight end. They don't have Mark Andrews. That is a big loss for them. But other than that, this offense is running. The running game's working really well. The offensive line is doing really well. The defense is elite. Man, this Baltimore Ravens team is just too good, man. I I truly believe this got to be the year for the Ravens. To make a run to the Super Bowl. I think this has got to be it. They're, they're just so talented. They, they've beaten good teams. I mean they went. to They played C, the Seattle Seahawks. And the Detroit Lions. Who were both red hot at the time. And smothered them. Yes the Browns game was a, was a shock. But you know the Browns are just as good. And I think defensively they made, they made big stops. And the second half, the Ravens are just not a good second half team. But that can all get changed in situation football. You know, and Lamar Jackson's a good quarterback. I mean, he's elite. I mean, to me, he's he's in the conversation for top three. I mean, Lamar is Lamar, Lamar is great, guys. Like, we need to stop the hate. Lamar Jackson is a good, damn good NFL quarterback. He is a franchise quarterback, I would throw everything at with Lamar. I am a big Lamar guy. I think he's great. And the Ravens just play better with him. And the offensive line is just playing great. And Lamar's healthy. And when once Lamar's healthy, there's nobody playing better than Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Now we get to the fun part. The Chargers. <sighs> Brandon Staley still has a job. Guys, how? I don't know. I think it's quite funny. How on earth does the Spano family, the Spanos family, continue to give this guy a job? Fire him. There's no other choice. Staley is not good. He's sloppy. He is not a good play caller. He is not, his defense is terrible. The offense is anemic. And how and why? <laughs> they have Keenan Allen. You have Austin Eckler as your running back. You have Justin Herbert as your quarterback. How are you this bad offensively? You went out and get Kellen Moore. Which by the way is the best thing the Cowboys ever did was fire him. Because guess what? Look how the Cowboys are looking offensively. Dak Prescott's 23 touchdowns. Kellen Moore made Dak Prescott look horrible. And now you're making Josh Justin Herbert look horrible. How? How do you do that? Justin Herbert's... I would do anything to have Justin Herbert. He's truly remarkable. He's an incredible quarterback. He's an incredible talent. How are you fucking this up? You, It's your fault. Spanos family, you need to look yourselves in the mirror and say, I have a top five quarterback in the National Football League. 
right now in my roster. I have an offense that could arguably be a top three, top five roster right now. Get a real coach. Get a real coach. You should have had Sean Payton, and you didn't do that. You let him go to Denver. And look at Denver now. They're 6-5. and five. The Chargers are in last place in that division. Last place. The Raiders are better than them right now. You ask the Chiefs, they would say the Raiders are a tough team to play against. I would not want to play the Raiders because they are playing hard, hard work in football right now. If they can just manage to get that offense working and maybe find some sort of balance with Aiden O'Connell and the quarterback situation, that team's scary. So in my opinion, guys, this is a team that, that honestly, in my opinion, should be doing way better than what they are. And I, I, I scratch my head on how the Chargers still have Brendan Staley as coach. He should have been fired since last year. Then you went out and fuck it even more by getting Kellen Moore. And Kellen Moore now looks like an absolute fucking moron because look what Mike McCarthy is doing with Dak Prescott now. Mike McCarthy is making Dak Prescott look like prime Aaron Rodgers. Kellen Moore was never a good hire. Brandon Staley was never a good hire. What are the Chargers doing? What they should be doing is going to Ann Arbor, Michigan and pay whatever the fuck Jim Harbaugh wants to come back to the NFL and coach the LA Chargers. Because he'll take that job in Harbaugh. He's got Justin Herbert. Justin, you have... The Chargers is an easy sell. You have a quarterback. A top five quarterback. An elite quarterback on your roster. You have a top receiving core. The only guy that just looks absolutely fucking dreadful is Quentin Johnson, who's starting to look like the Eagles version of Jalen Rand. He's the Chargers version of, version of Jalen Rigor. It's just, I just don't get it. <laughs> you have a defense with Derwin James, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, Asante Samuel Jr., that off defense. It should be elite. How are you this bad? It's no explanation. Other than the Chargers are just an abomination of a franchise. And it doesn't seem like it's going to work anytime soon. And I don't know what else to say. But the Chargers need to finally get rid of Brendan Staley. If they haven't done it yet, they'll never do it until the end of the season. They're just morons because they know Kellen Moore is going to be the coach. And Kellen Moore is just as inept as Brendan Staley. As just simple as that, guys. Like, there's no other choice. Where else can you do if you're the Chargers? They're just so bad. They're a bad football team. Because their coach is anemic. The coach is a dreadful coach. He's a guy that has no idea... He should be a junior varsity football coach, let alone a fran- an NFL head coach, and let alone a roster like the LA Chargers, who they should be dominating. They should be neck and neck with the Chiefs. And yet, they're in last place in that division. They were la- We were laughing at Denver. Now it's the Chargers we get to laugh at. The Raiders look more inept than the Chargers with Antonio Pierce as their coach. I like Antonio Pierce as a coach. I honestly believe the guy knows what he's doing. He's actually doing a good job with that front locker room and that franchise. I hope to God Mark Davis keeps him because I honestly believe it could work. It could be like Dan Campbell in Detroit. Let him build 
his staff. Let him build his football team. And you go from there. And then you go from that to the Denver Broncos, who are now six and five, who were one and five. You were laughing at them. They're six and five. And the Chargers are now four and eight. <laughs> or four and seven, I'm sorry. The team fucking sucks. They're overrated. And not only just that, they have a coaching staff that's just absolutely moronic. I honestly believe my my plumber could do a better job coaching this football team than Brandon Staley. What else can you say? What else can you say, man? Like it's just so poor. And I, I the Chargers just frustrate me. They just frustrate me. And the worst part is these issues right now. You fire Brandon Staley, there's no guarantee that will fix the Chargers. They got that in their head that they can't win close games. It's like the Bills now. I think what you need to do is hire a psychiatrist at this point. Because what else can you do? What else can you do? There's nothing else you can do about this team. They are a bad football team, guys. They are a bad football team. Mentally. There's nothing you can do about it. Guys, this was fun. To the House, Episode 9. This was great. I had a good time talking to you guys. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. We're having, uh, we're getting towards Christmas, guys. We're heading towards the winter now. This is, we're in near December. Next, this week will be December 1st. Fuck, guys, it's crazy to even think about it. We're almost near the end of the year. And, uh, this was fun. And see you guys on another episode of To The House.